Adieu. Keep your voice down. Pardon me, Mr. Public Anus. It's me that don't want to be seen with you, remember? It's Public Anus. I like it the other way, tax man. Hey, hey, hey! It's a month's salary for all my sons combined right there. You just toss them out? These are my property. I do with them as I wish. I pay you to drive. You sift through the trash on your own time. Driving you's a bit of both now, isn't it? <laughs> if any citizen asks about my cargo, I must tell the truth. <laughs> it's the biggest pile of dung in all Capernaum. <laughs> Matthew wanted to appear to others that he had it all together. However, inside was a scared little boy who wanted to protect those feelings of fear from others. How many times do we try and hide our true selves by dressing nice, being the life of the party, buying things, or the perfect Instagram post, and more? We might be dying on the inside, but we put on the facade of having it all together. We don't allow others to see the true us. This is your stop. Wait, this is the far side of the market. Get out. No, no, this is the job. You drive so I don't walk to the market. It's too crowded. Out. I'll pay you double. Money won't buy this thing of me and my family if I am seen with you. Out! This is very unprofessional. Fire me. Rejection, loneliness. Matthew surely felt these feelings. He was rejected by his parents. He was spit on, pushed and beaten up. He was not accepted or wanted. He was even hated by his own people for being a tax collector for the enemy, the Romans. Do you feel rejected or lonely? Not wanted, not liked? Push to your breaking point? Those are the moments we need to seek solace in Jesus instead of hiding our true selves from Him. Your last tribute was collected the first month of summer. Hmm. Your account is therefore delinquent by 40 days. At the penalty rate of 10% weekly. Six weeks? That's right. You're lucky to not be in jail. Hey. He said 60% of penalties. What's that leave you with? Simon, I came with about 60% of what I owe. I can't even pay. We're ruined. Well, now it's we. Uh, it's a high number. I say this based on your tribute history and future prospects. How do you choose to square your account? Are there gems inside? Just silver. Gold? Just open the purse. This will cover about half of your penalty balance. Half the penalty? My records indicate that you filed for an extension not once, not twice. You just needed a couple of extra days, man. I'm ruined. Extended rates compound at 15%. As collateral, you've listed a missing vessel and property at... All right, all right, I'm sorry, brother. What my brother didn't mention was our arrangement with Quintus. You have business with Quintus? Yeah, my brother's debt. And a year gratis for both of us. This will be verified with Quintus directly. If there's any inconsistency... There won't be. Now, can I get my brother's not gold back, tax man?
Just let me see if Quintus can verify their story. If those Hebrew sea rats were lying, Quintus will have them killed and collect their tribute from you. Matthew is a logical and honest person. He holds others accountable and demands the job to be done right. He is a rule follower and expects the same from others. This caused him to be an outsider. Do you find yourself placing expectations on people in your life? Sometimes we try to control situations to make ourselves more comfortable only to end up driving others away. Papaganus? Yes, Dominus. And are you his escort, Centurion? Yes. So where are you going? Securing the passageway, Praetor. Ah. Well done. Come on. So a Jew tax collector and his escort demand to see the Praetor of Judea. It's urgent, they say. A matter of life and death. Last night burned very hot, and today I'm ash, so I'll get to the point. Why should I not kill you both? You first. Did you hire a man to spy on Jewish merchant vessels fishing on Shabbat to avoid taxation? Yes. Simon. Is he in your district? He is. His debts are forgiven. Surprise. As well as those of his brother? His... Yes. Forgiven. Goodbye. Thank you for your time, Praetor. I do not find Simon reliable. Once he was deficient in his taxes, and when I pursued remedy, I discovered that he had spent an inordinate amount on games of chance at the local establishment. Additionally, based on his financial status, I questioned Simon's connections to the merchant class. In spite of his current intentions, I do not believe you have an accurate understanding of what he can deliver. I'm sorry for this dishonor, Peter. Say your last prayer, Jew. Stay there a moment, Captain. Are you saying I made a bad deal? Yes. <laughs> Where did he come from? <laughs> Here, Capernaum, Dominus. My brothers across the world search for brave men to spare and recruit, but our power prohibits those very efforts for what sane person would stand up to the Roman Empire. I am sane. Yes, but a very different kind of sane. I'm sorry, I don't understand. So, you say this Simon isn't at the level of the merchant class at sea, but he claims they all spend time at the same establishments. Is that false? I'm afraid I'm not aware of their social interactions. But even if that were true, it would be highly unusual for Jewish men to betray one another. So says the Jew who collects taxes from them. Mine is a different circumstance. Spare I... me. I admire it. Well, it won't surprise you to learn that to date, Simon has not fulfilled his obligation to uncover the tax evaders. He's in breach of contract. Not yet. But time may prove you out. Uh, what are you called? Matthew. Dominus. I may yet have need of your keen powers of observation, Matthew. A special assignment. I would relish the opportunity, Dominus. Of course you would. I'll be in touch, Matthew of Capernaum. Thank you, Dominus. Thank you. Matthew desired fairness and integrity. Visiting Praetor Quintus was a bold step to take. He was a high-ranking Roman official with lots of authority. Matthew was not willing to give in to manipulation and fear tactics of the Romans. He stood up for what he believed in at all costs. Seeing Quintus to verify this deal with Simon could have cost Matthew his job, his security, and even his life. Are you that bold? Are you willing to risk it all 
for the sake of what you know is right, no matter the cost? Where's your escort? He didn't want to enter. He feels that my lack of social grace He is... thinks you'll get him killed. Yes. Uh, not today, Matthew, no. <laughs> today, I am in need. And you heard me right. I am in need of your machine. My machine? Your mind, Matthew, keep up. You might have been right about Simon. He double crossed me, maybe. Probably. The truth is, I don't have many seaworthy troops here. It might have been an accident. Dominus? Follow Simon. I want to know where he goes, with whom he meets. Tell me what they're talking about, what he's drinking. Anything. The latter may prove difficult. In fact, all of what you request, Dominus, may prove difficult. But you're a resourceful man. Goal-oriented. I am not accepted. Where? Anywhere. I am a tax collector. Viewed with jealousy. Hated. Everyone hates tax collectors. They're worse than the Romans. You were born Roman. I made the choice. So go in disguise, I don't care. Uh, you can write, can't you? Yes. Uh, write everything. Every detail. Is your booth protected? Yes, Dominus. My dog guards it while I'm away. <laughs> oh, Matthew, you are a priceless treasure. Of course you have a dog. So you're following me now, huh? It's a matter of accountability. And you're here to make sure Quentin knows where to go when it's time to hurt me. You settle your debt. I keep track of things. I do it well. Quintus knows I do it well. You're a little... off, aren't you? You should turn yourself in. We can accompany nah. you. Instead of pursuing every option. There are none. You must provide the information implicating the guilty fishermen or... Balance the books, somehow. Andrew says anything's possible. Not mathematically. Yeah, but what if, you know? You'll only be subjecting your family and friends to needless anguish by prolonging the inevitable. These are other big words. But no one listens to me. Not like they do you. You have a singular talent. That's something at least. Matthew was nervous of the assignment Quintus gave him because he was not accepted in social settings. The very thought of having to do this made him very uncomfortable. He felt justice needed to take place though, and he respected Quintus's authority. Have you been called to do something that you weren't qualified to do? Did you turn down the offer because it would make you uncomfortable? Matthew could have hid in the shadows and not let Simon know he was there, but he boldly stepped out and challenge Simon to do what was right. Sometimes we hesitate to step out because we are scared of the consequences. Are you bold enough to challenge those around you to do what is right? What is holding you back? While Matthew was bold, he was also lonely. And to find comfort and protection, he turned to his dog. Like Matthew, we attach onto earthly comforts that can become idols. Maybe it's binge watching Netflix, comfort foods, shoes, new clothes, or what about gossip and money? We often look to these things for security and comfort Instead of turning to Jesus, the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19 says, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. We must not forget where our true help comes from. 
It comes from Jesus. Put that down for a catch. A little farther out. I don't have a quarrel with you, teacher. But we've been doing this all night. Nothing. All right. That's your word. Matthew sat separate from Jesus and the crowd while on the shore watching Simon. What was the purpose of this? Jesus could have called him right then. Jesus knew it was not time for Matthew yet. His timing is always perfect. Matthew definitely witnessed something he couldn't ever imagine or dream of. It was something that he couldn't explain or understand. There are times in our lives when we feel lonely or abandoned. Deuteronomy 31 and verse number eight tells us, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. We may feel like Matthew, that we are rejected and just sitting on the beach all alone. Jesus knows where we are, and He is with us. Trust His timing. Hello. This catch is worth a lot. <laughs> it's amazing. It's impossible. Simon, Andrew. I guess now I'll tell you the good news. We squared our debts with Quintus. Isn't that great? So, go back to your cage and stop following us. It's not you. I'm here about the man. What man? The man at the shore who made the fish appear. Man on the shore. You saw no man on the shore. Do you hear yes, me? Yes, I did! I was there, I saw. And I bet the first thing you did was tell Rome, huh? Simon. They don't believe me. You really are a traitor. Simon! Best for you to forget it. Go home, Matthew. They don't believe what I saw. 
I do. I need to know, am I deceived? What good is our answer? If you don't even listen to yourself. Matthew saw life as a math equation. He could find logic in anything, yet he couldn't understand what he witnessed with the fish. Who do you turn to when you can't explain life's chaos? When you don't understand what's going on? Are you longing for the approval of people? Do you find yourself putting more value in the approval from someone rather than God? Matthew, close the booth and go home. It's not time yet. There is a situation. Lock up and get out of here. What situation would require we abandon our post? A mob in the East slums. I'm coming with you. Excuse me? I'm coming with you. I said a mob of people. Matthew, I do not have time to protect you. How do you think I survived the other 16 hours of the day? <laughs> I, I have no idea. What's going on here? This is a peaceful gathering. That is what the Maccabees said. They're blocking the road. I'll move them. They just, they, they haven't been told where to stand yet. Finally. This widow keeps bothering me. I will see that she gets justice, so that she does not wear me out. I just wanted to hear the teacher teach. Up here, it's okay, come up. How did you get up there? We climbed the ladder. It's easy. Thank you. Uh, where are your parents? Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. Well. The man speaking is called... Jesus of Nazareth. We know him. This is how God clothes the blood of the It is here today and thrown into the fire of the world. How many times do we feel the stirring of the Spirit calling us to reach out and forgive someone or nudging us to help a hurting neighbor? Yet we ignore it because we might be uncomfortable. We are afraid of stepping out, so we stifle the Holy Spirit. Matthew didn't go 
hide at home while something big was going on. Something inside him was stirring and urged to do something different, even something uncomfortable. He hoped the questions might be answered. So he did what he wouldn't normally do. He went directly to a large gathering of people, people who despised him. He stepped out of his comfort zone. Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Matthew was beginning to hear the Holy Spirit's call. He had questions, but was not able to lean on his own understanding anymore. The miracle of the fish that was witnessed was leading him down a new path towards Jesus. Yes, I am. Are you lost? This young girl may have been asking Matthew if he was physically lost, but in that moment, everything made sense. He understood he was spiritually lost. He now knew the answer to life's equation he needed Jesus. Do you remember that moment when it clicked for you? When you realized you were lost, but now you are found? That smile from Jesus was the reassurance Matthew needed. He knew he was accepted, not rejected. The meaning of Matthew in Hebrew is gift of Yahweh. What a gift he received in that moment. Acceptance. He realized that he belonged to Yahweh. We too should long for the smile of Jesus. We can't see his face, but there are times we know he is smiling and cheering for us. Moments like when we accept Jesus in our hearts, or we follow him in water baptism, or when we turn back to Jesus after being in the wilderness of life, or all those moments when we trust and obey him. Jesus has not left us. We are not alone. Like Matthew, Jesus is drawing us to him. Can you feel his smile? Matthew. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. What are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy has done? Do you even know him? Yes. Listen, I said to... What are you doing? Where do you think you're going? Guys, let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're gonna throw it all away. Yes. I don't get it. You didn't get it when I chose you either. But this is different. I'm not a tax collector. Get used to different. 
follow me. Matthew couldn't believe what he heard. He never imagined he would be good enough to walk with Jesus. After spending years feeling rejected, it was hard to comprehend that Jesus wanted him. I am sure there are times in our lives that we question if we are good enough to follow Jesus. We hear Simon asking Jesus if he knew what Matthew had done. Jesus doesn't care what we have done. He cares about what we are willing to do. He cares about what we are willing to give up. And Matthew was willing to give up everything. Matthew, the strict rule follower, quit his job and walked away from his responsibilities to follow Jesus. You all keep eating. I, I will talk to this man. Guys. You're making a mistake. You can walk away from this. I made my choice. Look at that room. Other than Ram and Jayhaz, whom I know to be law-abiding tax collectors, everyone else in there, the dregs of Capernaum. Gaius, lower your voice. The bottom of the barrel. Germanic, correct? Isn't that what you told Quintus? Do not change the subject. Your people surrendered. I'm surrendering too. Gaius didn't understand or agree with Matthew's decision. We all will encounter people who want us to back down from radically following Jesus. They will try and convince us that we are making the wrong choice. But I love Matthew's response. I am surrendering. Oh, that's so good. Matthew surrendered it all to his Savior. What about you? What do you have in your life that you need to surrender? Control issues? The fear of rejection? Not feeling good enough? Matthew was finally able to come to terms that he was different than most. He became comfortable in his own skin because he knew he was a child of God. Matthew went from a life of isolation to a life of transformation. He was once an outcast and now fully accepted. How often do we find ourselves like Matthew, pretending that we have it all together, but yet we are insecure, lonely, and scared? We find ourselves putting on a tough exterior to cover up for the pain in our interior. We find ourselves hurt by words that others have spoken over us. We all have an inner Matthew, a time where we face rejection, feelings of not being good enough or not feeling accepted. It is what we do in these moments that matters the most. Matthew surrendered. He gave up trying to act okay in order to be content in Jesus. Will you do the same? Are you ready to drop down your walls and surrender it all to Jesus? Are you willing to leave everything behind and chase after Jesus? <laughs>